What's up guys? Welcome to G Whiskey. My name is Jeff. Now this is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey and once in a while I'll throw in a clickbaity list too. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below and with that out of the way, why don't we jump into our list. Today we're talking about seven batch released whiskeys that you guys need to try. Stick around. So we're doing a list today. This is going to be seven batch release whiskeys that you guys need to try. Now to clarify, all of these whiskeys need to come out every so often as limited releases. They don't necessarily need to be defined as batches. They could be unspecified. They could be annual releases, whatever. All that matters is that they get released every so often and that they maintain a certain profile. So every new release is going to be a variation on the same theme. They can be bourbon matured, sherry matured, peated, doesn't matter. But because I want a common thread throughout all of the releases that might disqualify some of the whiskeys that you guys are hoping to see here, that means uh, no Ardbeg annual releases. Very popular, everyone loves them, but they're not batches. Those are all standalone releases, not related to each other. Same is going to be true of Glen Scotia with her Cameltown Malts releases, Glen Morangy with its private editions, all of its special releases. The list goes on. Also, I want everything on this list to be affordable. That doesn't necessarily mean cheap or budget friendly, but at least affordable. So I'm not going to be including any Balvenie tons, no Macallans, no 21 plus year olds. I'm not even putting in uh, Springbank 12. Now Springbank 12 is super popular. It does come out in batches, but it's getting harder to track down. It's more expensive on the secondary market these days. If you order it online, you may have to apply to like a lottery where you may or may not get the bottle. The whole thing is very frustrating. I just didn't include it. Instead, I want everything on this list to be widely available, generally affordable, nothing exclusive, no waiting lists, no over-the-top price tag, nothing that would prevent your average consumer from getting their hands on a bottle at a reasonable price. So those are the general guidelines I'm working with here. This list is in no particular order, although, yeah, I mean, I guess you could call it an ascending list. Um, all of these whiskeys are things that I enjoy, that I buy personally, and things that I'm comfortable recommending to you guys. Also, I've got a mystery malt on the table with me here. Make sure you stick around to the end. I'll let you know what it is. You can call it a bonus, whatever. So make sure you stay tuned for that. And yeah, with all that out of the way, why don't we hop into our list? And in the meantime, if you could kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. First up, we have an honorable mention. Our honorable mention is going to be the Lefroig Cask Strength release. Now, this is just an honorable mention because I actually haven't had very much of this. Now, this is a whiskey that everybody knows everybody loves and I rarely get the chance to try it and here's why. We usually have very competitive pricing for scotch whiskey here in Taiwan but every once in a while I'll come across a bottle that's inexplicably way more expensive than it is in other markets and that's what's happened here. The price for this bottle here is a full 30 to 40 US dollars more than it is in other markets um, which is definitely the exception to the rule here in Taiwan but that's enough to make me not want to buy it. Now I have tried this stuff but only a couple times I've never actually had a full bottle to myself. Because of that, I don't feel comfortable putting it on the proper list, but I can tell you guys that it is really good stuff and that you should check it out. And that's coming from someone who doesn't usually vibe with Laphroaig. It's not a favorite brand of mine, and I know that's heresy to a lot of you out there. But this, this is one of the few expressions from them that I can really get behind. So it's a great one. Check it out, Laphroaig 10 Cast Strength. So we'll kick things off with our number seven. This is an OG batch released whiskey. I think it kind of pioneered releasing whiskey in batches. It's also an OG Sherry Bomb whiskey. This one comes in at cast strength. I'm sure a lot of you out there have already figured out what I'm talking about. This is gonna be the Abrilar Abana. This is a whiskey that I've been buying for well over 10 years now. And if I'm being totally honest, it's not quite where it used to be in terms of quality. I think a lot of those old school batches were darker, heavier, and I suspect the whiskey was a little bit older. But the Abanaz we get today are still delicious. It's a big hit of sherry, it packs a big punch, and it's just a really fun whiskey. Now I don't think any list of batch released whiskeys would be complete without this bottle. So number seven, Abrilar Abana. Our number six is another sherry bomb. It's another Speyside whiskey. We're looking at the Tamdu batch releases. These are cask strength expressions, delicious whiskeys, very big, very bold, very loud. But they also maintain a fair bit of sophistication just thanks to Tamdu being such a high quality distillate. Now, I tend to prefer the older batches, namely batch 1 to maybe batch 3 or so, but the later batches are still good and if you can't find those early batches at a reasonable price, skip them, go for the new ones. These whiskeys offer us that beautiful Tamdu house style kind of cranked up to 11. Uh, Tamdu, much like Aberlour, they specialize in sherry. I think they choose very high quality casks and something like this. Major player on the Sherry Bomb scene, not one to be missed, so number six is going to be Tamdu Batch Releases. 
Our number five is an interesting one because this is a whiskey I probably wouldn't have recommended to you guys a couple years back. Unlike the Aberlauer, unlike the Tamdu, you don't have to run out seeking those older batches. This one seems to be getting better with time. I'm talking about the Glenalkey 10 year old cask strength. This is another Sherry Bomb whiskey, so clearly we have a theme popping up here. I fully admit it. Your boy loves Sherry Bombs. These whiskeys are loud, they're rich, they're in your face. Uh, personally, I'd recommend anything starting from maybe batch four, batch five, moving forward from there. The older ones were okay, but they were definitely lighter on the sherry. They were just not where they needed to be yet. Now there are reasons for that, and those are explained in my review of batch four, so I'll link that up above if you guys wanna check it out. But needless to say, you don't need to spend too much time or energy seeking out those older batches. Um, yeah, we've got another great sherry bomb here. Number five is gonna be Glen Alkey 10 Cast Strength. All right, so this is getting ridiculous. We are looking at another Sherry Bomb here. We're going to be looking at the Ben Romick Cast Strength Expressions, more specifically their newer ones. But at least we do have a bit of a twist with this one. Not only is it sherried, it's also peated. This stuff is rugged. It's unpretty. Uh, it sometimes gets compared to Springbank whiskey. And yeah, it is comparable, but it's also its own thing. Um, but yeah, either way, Ben Romick is something of a hidden gem of a distillery. People that know it do tend to like it, but it's not what I'd call popular in the whiskey community. I think this brand deserves more respect. I think they make cool stuff. Kind of like the bad boy of Speyside. We have like earth and peat and leather and sherry. Proper cowboy stuff. Check it out. Ben Romick, Castrith. So I didn't really set out an order for this list when I got started, but I kind of did. Um, this is another Aberlauer expression. I did intentionally place it higher on the list than our Abana. Uh, that's because I like it better. This is a much less popular expression. I'm talking about the Kazg Anamu Anam. I don't know how to say it. This one is, of course, sherried. It's another no age stated expression. It comes in at 48% ABV, which, while high, is not quite cast strength like the Abana is. It's also a lot newer than the Abana, which probably explains why it's much less popular. Now, I personally prefer this to the Abana. I think it's got a better set of flavors. I think it's slightly older whiskey, to be honest. There's some nice spices in here. I think it's just more, more of a full experience. The Abana, by comparison, is gonna be sweeter. It's got more kick, and I'm sure there will be a chunk of you out there who do prefer it. Either way, this is a great whiskey. It shows you a different side of Aberlauer. Not one to be missed, so check it out. Kazg Amanamanamanama. Our number two is something I reviewed on this channel a few months back and I really liked it. I think I gave it something like 91 or 92. I gave it a great score. It's my kind of whiskey. We've got big peat in here. We've got big sherry. Love the balance. Love the richness. This is the Kilhoman Loch Gorm. This is another one where I'd suggest you guys grab the newer batches. There's no need to go digging for those older, more expensive, hard to find batches. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, the newer stuff is better. Of course, there are going to be a lot of people out there who disagree. A lot of people do swear by the older stuff. The 2021 is out, but I haven't been able to track it down yet. When I do find it, I'll be buying it. Uh, I did try last year's 2020 release. It was spectacular. Now, I have had a few Loch Gorms over the years, and the older ones were nice, but the newer ones have a more rounded profile. I feel like the whiskey is getting more sophisticated. Either way, you can't go wrong with this stuff. This is one of my favorite expressions from one of my favorite Isla distilleries. It's wonderful stuff. Kilhoman Loch Gorm, number two. Our number one is probably not one that you guys were expecting. Now, I'm sure you were expecting a sherried whiskey, and you are, of course, not wrong there. But we're not looking at a scotch. We're heading over to Ireland. We're looking at the Red Breast 12-year-old cast strength. I've got batch one from 2020 here. This is a stunning whiskey. Uh, this is a pot still whiskey made with malted and unmalted barley. Um, I can honestly say that this is the best Irish whiskey I've ever had. I'll admit I'm not super experienced with Irish, but gorgeous stuff also puts most of my scotch collection to shame just amazing stuff this one comes in a cast strength it brings together a touch of sherry and a classic irish profile and just the intensity the roundness the flavors i'm in love with this stuff it's so drinkable it's so delicious it's not overpriced this is just everything i look for in a whiskey number one Redbreast 12 cast strength so that's the end of our list today. I do hope you guys enjoyed it. I would highly recommend any and all of the whiskeys I just mentioned. All of them would get a decent score from me. All of them are delicious. Now, I know some of you stuck around because you're curious to find out what our mystery malt on the table is here. This is a beautiful whiskey. It's a new release, came out this year in 2021. This is the Kilhoman PX cask. Now, I didn't include this on the proper list for a couple reasons. 
first, uh, no one's ever tried more than one batch because it's just out this year. And second, I'm not sure that this will be a batch release or an annual release. I've heard it's meant to be something similar to Lock Gorm and it'll come back every year or so, but I could be wrong there. I've also heard reports that this was just a one-off. So this actually may or may not fit the theme of our list. Either way, it is a really nice whiskey. It is one to pick up if you see it. I don't know that you can come back to it next year. So if you see this year's release, grab it. Beautiful stuff. So what did I miss? Are there any whiskeys that you guys would add to the list here? Are there any annual releases or any batch releases that were not included? I would love to hear from you. Let me know what they are down in the comments. All right, that's it for our list today. That's seven batch whiskeys for you guys to look out for. All of them are wonderful whiskeys. I do hope you guys enjoy them as much as I do. And yeah, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye guys.